morning today we have mr k sachitanandan with us for jaipur evenings interview good morning sir good morning so first things first uh, how are you liking this city our city of calcutta yeah i have been here uh, quite a few times okay. and uh, well i am in love with that especially certain parts of calcutta uh, because having been a colonial capital i think it has a special kind of character with the uh, various kinds of old bungalows and the and and those uh, streets and markets and various kinds of colonial buildings and golf clubs and uh, you know all those so some of the remains of colonialism and and, and, and uh, of course uh, the the great uh, victoria museum and other things the national museum i was i've been everywhere and yes i i i love it it is one of the things i love Yeah, I I love the National Museum too. The National Library too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. So, <laughs> so yes, definitely yes. So sh- we will starting off with the questions and um, why do you think poetry readings and poetry festivals are essential? Why do you think poetry readings and poetry festivals are essential? Uh, indeed, because poetry uh, ultimately has to reach the people, and one of the major ways in which. it can address the people and it can actually reach the uh, people uh, is certainly you know having uh, readings at poetry festivals and uh, uh, various kinds of uh, literary festivals uh, because uh, of course there are people who buy books of poetry and read uh, but uh, compared to the people who would love to listen to poetry uh, they are much less you know and the number of books we sell and the number of people who come to listen to us there's a kind of mighty disproportion between them so uh, th- that's i think that that makes readings extremely important and relevant yes and uh, so what do you think connects cultures across border is it words emotions or practical experiences yeah I ultimately i have always felt that human beings are ultimately one of course we label them differently we give them names of religions and mm-hmm. nationalities and all that various kinds of identities but i believe that uh, basic human emotions are the same and that's exactly uh, where poetry comes in because what we try to do uh, even even though poetry has its specificities you know the language and um, and the region all these influence you in spite of that there is at the heart of poetry at the core of poetry something that appeals to every human being because it speaks about love it speaks about uh, um, various uh, pains agonies anxieties and also the pressures indeed of life and that i think is common to the whole so human whole race basic human emotions yeah basic emotions yes um moving to the next question do you conceive a poem or does poetry happen to you uh well uh, in in most cases it just comes to me uh i write and when i write i go on revising and sometimes i go back to it and do further revisions in most cases most of the revisions are done when i do the first draft itself yeah i do, i i uh, only in the case of very long poems i have book long poems sometimes mm-hmm. in that case you need some kind of a planning uh, beforehand about how to divide the poem into sections and all that even though when you actually start to write when all these plans change and they they dissolve into uh, you know the the the, the moment and its own uh, specific uh, inspiration and the kind of words that you choose and all that yeah, times it happens that you think of a poem you start in certain way and then end of the day whole poem changes yes it's a yeah, it, yeah the, it, it goes on changing i mean every line because you can't you can't conceive the whole thing beforehand and uh, even if you do that when you write it is a different poem altogether yeah. uh, as a reader what appeals to you the poet's voice or the poet's alter ego uh, i would say the poet's voice I mean, if i am asked to make a choice yeah <laughs> Yes, the poet's voice. Because I think uh, uh, each each poet uh, has uh, what can be called a voice in the sense of, uh, uh, and that voice comes through. Uh, I mean, uh, in the choice of form, in the choice of words, in the choice of the particular themes and emotions that he is trying to uh, to appeal to, and uh, that is how poet one poet becomes different from another. Uh, voice in that sense of the. the larger symbolic sense of the word yes true and lastly how do you see the present world of poetry both nationally and internationally 
Uh, yeah, I think one of the things I have noticed is that perhaps the bigger countries are losing out to smaller countries. Uh, because Europe, there was a time when European poetry was uh, at its height, you know, of, and we got the best poets from Spain or from uh, France or Germany and other major European countries. But now look at the poets who have come here, for example, you know, uh, from smaller countries like Slovenia, from, from, uh, from Belgium, from Macedonia. And these poets, I believe, are in fact uh, writing better poetry than many of the poets writing in French, for example, uh, many of whom disappoint me when I read them in, in, in translation. So that is one major thing. The, the periphery is taking over the center uh, in, in one sense and the smaller countries are coming up. And I think that is very symbolic mm -hmm. of what, what should happen in the world too, that small people begin to take over and uh, uh, this is perhaps the beginning. So it's, a very symbolic, it's very symbolic of it. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm amazed and I learned so much. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.